Hello, very good morning to all of you. Welcome back to the video lecture series. So, dear friends, we are discussing here the food analysis part of our CHA 393B paper. And today we are going to see the last lesson, last chapter from this our syllabus. And the title of the last chapter is analysis of food preservatives okay so this chapter is totally related to the food preservatives first of all let us see what is the meaning of food preservative or what are mean by preservatives the name itself indicates that preservatives means these are the substances used to preserve the food these are the substances or chemicals which are used to preserve the food for a longer period of time during transportation or during storage until that food product goes into the consumption by a customer till that period that food product should not decompose by the microbial action or by the deterioration by enzymatic action okay so this is nothing but food preservative so what is the actual definition scientific definition of food preservative these are the substances or chemical substances or chemicals added to the food products we are adding these substances not only the food products but we are adding also in beverages okay then uh, to the pharmaceutical drugs then different cold drinks okay so in all these cases we are adding food preservatives uh, we are adding preservatives so what is the main purpose so main purpose for adding these food pres uh, preservatives is that to prevent decomposition by microbial growth when a suitable condition is get acquired by the microorganisms then they may multiplate they may get multiplied and the multiplication changes multiplication of these microorganisms changes that food into a low quality or it may get decomposed okay or it may be due to the chemical changes means enzymatic action may be taken place and due to this enzymatic action this food may get decomposed okay so food may get spoiled for so for the to prevent the spoilage of that food we are adding here food preservatives and food additives are added to enhance the food quality and the flavor or the texture okay so to en to enhance or to increase the food quality or a texture or the flavor the food additives are added but food preservatives are are, are added for the uh, for getting rid of the decomposition of food by different chemical microbial or enzymatic action here in our syllabus different food preservatives are given but the estimation of these food preservatives by specific methods we are going to study here okay the first food preservatives is sulfur dioxide so the sulfur dioxide is used as a food preservative in most of the different types of food okay so it is may be used in the form of a gas so sulfur dioxide gas okay then it may be used in the form of a solution as sulfurous acid or it may be used in the form of sulfides of sodium potassium and calcium so sodium sulfide potassium sulfide and calcium sulfide so these are the different forms which can be used as a food preservative okay and it is this is nothing but sulfur dioxide so2 so so2 is used in the different forms either in solution either in um, salt form that is sulfides or in sulfur dioxide gas form but for the purpose of regulations the amount present in the the amount present of this so2 in food products is calculated as sulfur dioxide okay so maybe 
forms of SO2 preservatives used in food products may vary, but the determination e or estimation of that preservative is done as per regulations, as per legislation is in the form of SO2. This sulfurous acid present in the foodstuffs is acting as a preservative by controlling or limiting the growth of mold, one of the type of fungi, yeast and aerobic bacterial and aerobic bacterial decomposition and prevents browning of fruits and vegetables. So it is also preventing the browning of fruits and vegetables means what when we um, cut an apple okay or a, any fruit let us say gava or apple and if we place that food in an open place in the open atmosphere for a period of more than half an hour then after some time you may observe that the outer surface that is the cutted surface may get browning okay so what is this this is the browning of fruits this is due to the different enzymic enzymatic actions which are taken place in that food so this is avoided by the use of sulfur dioxide okay now this tanner's method this tanner's method is used for the estimation of sulfur dioxide okay so sulfur dioxide can be estimated or can be determined with the help of a tanner's method different methods are there for the estimation of this so2 but this tanner's method is one of the best method for the estimation of so2 okay what are the reagents for this tanner's method phosphoric acid so 88 percent phosphoric acid solution is used for this method second reagent is hydrogen peroxide solution it is 0.2 percent weight per volume 0.2 percent weight to weight per volume means 0.2 gram of uh, hydrogen peroxide taken in 100 ml of water so it is 0.2 percent solution then anyway solution having molarity 0.01 molar okay sodium hydroxide is it is 0.01 molar molarity then methanol which is of AR grade this solvent methanol solvent is used then mix indicator is used in this standard method and this mix indicator is made in this way take 50 ml of 0.03 percent ethanolic methyl rate indicator okay so this is first solution 50 ml of 0.03 percent ethanolic methyl rate indicator solution and to this add 50 ml of 0.05 percent ethanolic solution of methylene blue indicator okay so methyl red and methylene blue these two indicators solutions have been made in ethanol have been made in ethanol okay so ethanolic solutions are made okay and the percentage are given in this case okay so the total it will give you 100 ml solution and after mixing it filter it and you, you will use this the filtrate you can use this for the titration purpose then these are the reagents used in this tanner's method the method what is the procedure way if it is solid in nature if the sample is solid in nature or you have to weigh or if it is liquid in nature you have to pipe it out so pipe it out or weigh a specific quantity of sample a specific quantity of sample note down it in distillation flask and add distilled water and 50 ml methanol okay so you have to add distilled water and 50 ml methanol in this distillation flask so the assembly or the laboratory setup for this tanner's method for the estimation or determination of sulfur dioxide present in the food sample okay this sulfur dioxide is, as, is used as a preservative in food samples that can be determined by the standard method the assembly is set up 
is like this which is shown in this diagram okay so this is burner this is distillation flask See, it is just like a distillation flask distillation assembly but it is a modified distillation assembly okay so a distillation fl uh, flask is there and the, it is three neck flask okay uh, so it is on the top of this distillation flask the condenser is adjusted okay one side arm is there for the nitrogen purging nitrogen gas purging for the inert atmosphere and for in one another side arm is there for the attachment of dropping funnel okay and this through this dropping funnel we have to add your phosphoric acid solution okay heating assembly is there with the help of burner we can heat this uh, distillation flask content okay then uh, water condenser is there this is the inlet this is the outlet this is the inlet of water this is the outlet of water water condenser is there so this is the assembly and this is the vapors is then uh, attached vapor then passes through this distillation receiver okay so distillation receiver is there okay so the shape of this distillation receiver is like this and this is nothing but a guard wash bottle this is nothing but a guard wash bottle okay so this is the typical assembly for the tanners method now let us see the procedure so here the first step is we, we have to add we have to take whey or pipette out a sample food sample and taken it in a distillation flask then to this distillation flask add distilled water as well as 10 ml sorry 50 ml methanol air grade 50 ml methanol where you have to add then before going to start heating first of all you have to add some reagents or chemicals that we have discussed here that reagents you have to add in this distillation receiver okay what are these reagents at 10 ml of hydrogen peroxide solution at 10 ml of hydrogen peroxide solution in this distillation receiver okay then add to it 60 ml distilled water then add a few drops of mixed indicator a few drops of mixed indicator is added here then a few drops of NaOH solution few drops of NaOH solution is also added in this distillation receiver to produce a green color okay now again add 10 ml of neutralized s2o2 10 ml of neutralized hydrogen peroxide solution is added in this guard wash bottle okay then add 15 ml phosphoric acid 15 ml s3po4 solution that is phosphoric acid solution is that added with the help of this adding addition funnel or dropping funnel okay with the help of this pinch cock you have to add drop wise this addition uh, 15 ml of uh, sulfuric acid uh, sorry phosphoric acid to this distillation flask okay then allow adjust this nitrogen flow assemble this uh, assembly as shown in figure then adjust this nitrogen flow okay nitrogen gas flow to this distillation flask like 60 bubbles per minute okay then heat the distillation flask heat the distillation flask rapidly and then the reaction occurs between all these chemicals okay then after this reaction you have to heat this assembly or this distillation flask for 30 minutes then after 30 minutes whatever the reaction mixture or whatever the uh, contents in this distillation receiver that we have to determine okay then detach this distillation receiver from this assembly okay then titrate the sulfuric acid which is present in this distillation receiver after this reaction whatever the sulfuric acid present in the in this distillation receiver you have to titrate this sulfuric acid with 0 0.1 molar NaOH solution 0 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution so this is a simple acid bed acid based reaction titration is there and uh, the acid is phosphoric acid sorry acid is sulfuric acid which is formed by the reaction of phosphoric acid 
that we have take taking here and the self SO2 gas which is present in our food sample this is the reaction between SO2 gas present in our food sample and the phosphoric acid that we are adding from the dropping funnel in this distillation flask after heating and a reaction okay we are having a sulfuric acid okay form in this distillation flask it is then transferred to a distillation receiver and this uh, sulfuric acid which is present in this distillation receiver we have to titrate it against sodium hydroxide 0.1 molar solution okay with the help of mix indicator that is methyl red and methylene blue indicator until the indicator shows green color until your solution turns green okay so this is the simple tanner's method for the determination of SO2 then calculation part okay so SO2 amount of SO2 present in the food sample or food stuff can be calculated as A into M small a into M small a into capital M into 32 32 into 1000 divided by divided by Q divided by Q so this is the formula for the estimation of SO2 by Tanner's method estimation of SO2 by Tanner's method okay so what is A here A is nothing but volume of NaOH in ML A is nothing but volume of NaOH in ML M is molarity of NaOH solution that is sodium hydroxide solution that is 0.01 molar okay then 32 into 1000 divided by Q Q is the amount of sample in gram or in ml amount of sample in gram or in ml okay that is weight of sample in gram or in volume of sample in in ml okay so from this calculation we have to determine the amount of SO2 present in this food sample by Tanner's method okay so this Tanner's method is one of the most important procedure for the uh, yes, uh, SO2 determination the SO2 is used as a food preservative in our food sample okay so this is the important procedure for the um, food preservative okay thanks for watching this video have a nice day